Hello everyone and welcome back to my Interstellar Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this live stream I did finally record it properly and so we'll get little bits where the original audio is played but the first thing I wanted to do was to see if I correctly configured the closed cycle gas core engine with test flight and so that's the first test we see here okay physical time warp because otherwise it's gonna take too long oh well I guess we could check whether te test flight uh, sees it we're collecting data units actually which is funny because we haven't launched I thought it only collected data units after launch but you see it does have a mean time before failure it's uh, high 735 minutes but this engine can fail so now we have test flight working on this it also has a limited burn time of 7 minutes and 30 seconds that might not be perfectly accurate but it will make things more entertaining uh, what I did next was replace the nuclear first stage that we had used before with a Raptor first stage, two Raptor engines and I decided to see how much it could lift ignition and launch just watch we test the engine on the ground and somehow it fails to work up here that would be just my luck oh we should have put the atlas cone on it instead of this one maybe hazard stripes on the nuclear stage pretty high G's but, but we could throttle it down if we want to later it's actually the wrong way around there okay set and ignition come on nuclear engine okay and off we go well it, it claims to have a lot more delta V than it actually has do not be fooled by this that's lying and you can tell because it's running out far faster than we're getting velocity here right so there's a mis mismatch between what that's saying and what we've got there but at least we've got good thrust uh oh dangerous overheating occurred already oh and then it stops reading it altogether but I don't know what that reactor shutdown is it doesn't seem to do anything well now it claims to have 6700 I still don't believe it not with the amount of methane we have okay yeah so we're at 7826 meters per second let's see how much extra delta V we have and let's just go prograde otherwise that number won't be right okay will we get to escape or not and how are we doing on that soot stuff 84 percent 85 percent in theory the max burn time is matching what the soot accumulation is future interstellar starships I'm really bad at names so that's probably the last thing I'll do so we can't get to escape with 50 tons but it's pretty good we carry 50 tons to a high orbit I was very satisfied with that kind of performance so I proceeded to build a new module for our station which would help collect more antimatter so we've got a science lab there and then I extended it with an additional antimatter collector unit and a containment unit but I decided that it would be best with the spinning section on the station to have that tube which is basically a crew tube to extend it out so it doesn't interfere with other things and we would launch this on our new rocket so let's take a look at how that works out it should be able to bring it to the station oh I think I can do that Far is gonna have a field day with that size fairing well we're gonna find out here we go Ignition and launch. Oh, we forgot to put the Kerbals in. You know what? We need a Kerbal transfer vehicle. Yeah. We didn't put the Kerbals in, but we should send them up on something else. We need a Kerbal transfer vehicle. That's gonna be designed next. I think we can separate the fairing now.
Okay, set. And ignition. Note that we are igniting it in space. Atmosphere aficionados. Oh, throttle up. Okay, stop. Why igniting in an atmosphere would be any more problematic? Well, Ash, they're just gonna make an issue of it. It's here when I tried to relight the engine that I discovered a problem with how I had configured it for Realism Overhaul, because both Realism Overhaul and KSP Interstellar like to change the fuel of the engine, so let's hear that. Ignore the liquid fuel indicator, we're actually burning methane in it, but... But, uh, Realism Overhaul doesn't know that. Okay. Okay, maybe it knows more than I do. What? Liquid fuel deprived. But, but, methane. I, I see a, f I, I, we relit it last time, right? Okay, wait. Hold on. I remember relighting this. And now it's reading liquid methane there. We did! We tested it with... It says no propellants, but we, we tested it already. Um, I'm um, going to go back to the Space Center. Hold on, let's turn that off. Space Center. I'm not going to revert flight. Can't do that right now. And then we're going to turn back to it and hope that it's reconsidered. And that's because realism overall is used to switching the fuels or switching engine configurations on its own. But KSP Interstellar is also used to switching engine configurations and fuel on its own. So trying to get them to both be happy with that and use test flight. Yeah, normally uh, you don't have to worry about it, but because KSP Interstellar dominates. But test flight is peculiar. Okay. What is lighting up? Okay, cool. Uh, no, please. We're a little bit late. I think shutting down and reactivating. I think it's the whole thing, that thing where if it doesn't see propellants, it doesn't like to ignite. And then it keeps not igniting, even though it really has propellants. But I feel like that's an actual encounter. It's, it's not particularly sure about that. I hate when it does this. See, it, it gets close and then it decides, nope, nope, not gonna show you the encounter. Alright, fine. I know there's an encounter there. We'll just keep burning until we get it. So it automatically switches the fuel to liquid fuel every time we shut down the engine, it seems. Though it didn't do that the first time we went up. Oh, we went past the closest approach distance. Oh, there's only one ignition remaining. We're going to have to do it with the RCS on the thing. Because we want to dump this. Let's decouple. Okay. This has a limited amount of time. We are going to uh, go orbit, prograde. Oh. Hmm. It's a little bit in the way over there. Let's make sure that we can... Yeah, we can RCS. Yeah, try and push it away. Make sure that this is on the right propellant. And out of the system it goes. No! <sighs> Dang it! Now it's stuck in the same orbit. Crud. Hmm. We had it working. I mean, it had, definitely had enough Delta V to get out of here. I gave it its one ignition, but no, the propellant had to be unstable. Whatever. Fine, be that way. I was trying to be nice and clean up space, but... 
So that was a shame, but normally the engine's icon turns red when the fuel is unsettled and ullage is required, and that didn't happen with the nuclear engine. You can see it happening with the thrusters on this module though, so that was weird. Uh, I think I've misjudged this badly. Uh oh, uh oh. What, what, what? No, what are you doing? What, what, what? Ooh. Uh. No, no, um, no, no. <sighs> okay, um, let me try and take it without Smarty SS, because that's getting a little bit too wiggly. But it's got to be a tough docking because I don't want to retract the uh, rotating portion. Oh, come on. No, oh, we've got a bump. Uh, the angle might be too much. Got to try it. Ah! Pushed it together. Alright. Okay, well, we don't have any crew in this module. Uh, that's collecting antimatter already. That's a good rate too. How's this one doing? This one's slower than this one's pointed in a better direction apparently. Okay, but we could get some more crew and um, working in the lab here. Let's develop a crew transfer vehicle. Escape pods. Oh, oh shoot! I did not want to do that. Speaking of things that are a problem. Uh, no. Um. What we do have is an ejection system for the reactor core, which is here. But we do have a secondary reactor core, which is here. And those ejector rockets are facing the wrong way. Uh, though we do have Super Dracos that are facing the right way, so I guess that works. But yeah, we're, we have Separatrons to push reactors away just in case bad things happen. But... Uh, as far as having a module try and hit the station, we weren't really prepared for that. Now for the crew transfer vehicle, I always like space planes. I always like little dream chaser sorts of things and shuttles of course. So I set about trying to figure out what engine would be good, still using liquid methane. And I hit upon a design with nine candle engines. These are basically RTGs and the fuel just goes over them and gets heated up by the RTG. So let's take a look. Okay, please go in a straight line. Oh, that's too far. It's played too far out. Now we're gonna run out. All right, forget it. Brakes. What? Um, it uh, it decided to pop us into the air for no reason. Okay. Uh, and it's stalling. And it's stalling. Candle engines, please. <laughs> wow, uh, why did all of them but one go out? Not helpful, candles. Oh! Hmm. That's funny. Why did one of them continue on? Propellant hydrogen. Ah. Right. 
that would be the problem. So not an auspicious start, but I tried to launch it on the Raptor Atlas anyway. This is the, the one with two Raptor engines and then an RL-10 second stage. So it's not going to be quite so energetic. Uh, but of course this was dodgy for aerodynamic reasons. Also there's an issue with the candle engines. Their sea level performance thrust and ISP is the same as in vacuum. That's also true of the Vasimir engine. And so I'll talk a little bit about what I'm planning to do about that later on. But let's take a look at this. Throttle is up, SAS is on. That's gonna do a whole lot of good. Ignition. And launch. Well, we're going up. Right. We uh we are facing an abort situation. Um I don't know what staging is gonna help here. Right, uh some of those are liquid I, okay. Once again, uh, look, the candles we're all supposed to be methane. I had them a eight-way symmetry for own sakes. Let's see which three are actually. Yeah, that's not helpful, candles. It's loading. Uh, we're probably pretty darn heavy for this. It was tested with that tank empty. I should just keep running the engines, such as they are. If I could turn it around in any way, I would, but I can't turn it actually. What sort of plane is this? Um, one that isn't working very well right now. Yeah, it's sort of, sort of very leaf-like right now. I can't go for anything. There's no point telling me to go for the water or anything. It's way below its stall speed. It's just sort of in a flat spin mode. I could put RCS on. Oh, that worked. Well, RCS works. Not soon enough, though. SAS on now. Well, okay, shut off the engines. No, there's no way I could raise the nose very well. Did I configure flat? Well, uh, you mean... Y I, I should probably do that. Oh well. Uh, well, we saved the crew. Um, I'm just gonna revert flight. We've got probably a lot of debris sitting around. We saved the crew, which is very important. Let's go back to vehicle assembly. Okay, that's good. That's ready. Alright, ignition. And launch. Okay, past the speed of sound. Approaching maximum dynamic pressure. You know what happens there. Yep, flippiness. That should be around maximum dynamic pressure right there. Okay, I think we're through. Need a lot of time to apoapsis. There's not much by way of um, thrust weight ratio after this stage. Jeez, uh, okay, well, it's up. Alright, set. And ignition of RL10B, uh, uh, RL10B2, yes. Okay, I dread finding out what the candles are gonna do now.
Okay, and set. Well, they're all on methane at least. We seem to be lacking fuel somewhere. Oh, uh, the wings aren't fully fueled. Wonder why that is. 3 3 G's. Uh, 10.3 kilonewtons. And same as we can pump. You see, that's the problem. For some reason, the engines have the same specific impulse on the ground as they do in vacuum right now. So that seems to be a thing I need to fix. They're not drawing any electrical power. Electric charge is stable. We haven't turned on our fuel cell. They're not drawing any electrical power. I guess in theory these might be providing some. just flat out wrong yeah no kidding I mean in clicking on them they um, they have consumption zero megawatts out of a variable number of megawatts it seems to be very changeable how many megawatts we have available but consumption is zero yeah well uh, okay fix resisto jets <laughs> See, all the things I need to work out here. See, that's going to take 1,466. And then we have to uh, match speeds with the target. Let's say we just do uh, boost up and match like this. That's another 1,223. We don't have the delta V for that. So let's just do a... Oh, shoot. Let's just do a re-entry test. Uh, that's probably too far. Ooh. The, the RCS thrusters do work well. I just wish they worked the way they're supposed to. We uh, will overshoot Cape Canaveral. Um, we, we might actually be able to land at Kuru if there was a runway there. Yeah, so it looks like I have to think up um, a better crew vehicle. I'm not going to be satisfied with this little thing. Um, we've got a problem. We're running out of liquid methane. Okay, we, we have run out of liquid methane. Oh dear. Those RCS ports aren't just aren't efficient enough. Yeah, we've got a bit of a problem. I can't really control it because we're not in the thick part of the atmosphere so I can't really use the aerodynamic surfaces and I have no RCS. I don't know if this chaotic re-entry would have been any better if we did have some liquid methane and did have RCS control. The problem was that the resisto jets that I was using for RCS which are from the KSB Interstellar pack uh, didn't have the performance that I thought they would have. They had worse performance than normal RCS and so they guzzled up the liquid methane really really quickly and that led to this but the plane did survive re-entry uh, amazingly not well I mean some parts exploded but then there was a stall issue right here and so you'll suddenly see it uh, go up and then plunge down because it just doesn't have lift anymore and control was really bad and so it was a crash so that wasn't very successful uh, but I have a lot to think about as far as all this stuff working together. Uh, when I turn back to our station, the antimatter collection was not proceeding at the pace that I thought it would, at least on our new unit. Uh, so we'll have to take a look at that. I've noticed that in KSP 1.2, the KSP Interstellar Pack doesn't have the molten salt reactor part that I used for this station. So I'm taking a look at whether it's possible to uh, have this uh, be in KSP 1.2 instead of KSP 1.1.3 because Realism Overhaul is getting sort of ready for 1.2 and maybe that'll solve some of the problems that I've seen with ISP and Thrust being the same at sea level and in vacuum uh, but I don't know if this station will survive because some of the parts, a lot of the parts on this station don't exist in KSP 1.2 so that's something that I have to weigh in the balance 
but that's a possibility for now. I'll think about that and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.